Hello there friends, Crystal here. Welcome back to Fall of Porcupine. Last time we went to the Hibernation Festival. It was a heck of a lot of fun. I'm sorry, I don't think I recorded like an intro for that episode or an outro for the preceding one uh, because we did have a crash, um, which is fine. It wasn't a big deal. It had autosaved previously, but I figured that was probably a good place to split it anyway. So today you get a proper intro and hopefully a proper outro. Um, today in that fall of porcupine we are actually heading in for our i think it's our second night shift oh it's snowing wow look at that it's snowing hey porcupine all of you happy hibernation festival yeah just in time really although we did have to leave the festival a bit early because, again, night shift. Uh, so hopefully this doesn't put a dampen on any of their festivities. Alright, so last time in the hospital, um, I was a little bit worried for... I think it was Ollie? Ollie and Irma. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned, but we'll see how they're doing. I'm hoping everything's going to be okay. Not in the mood for hyper or for the hibernation festival? Sure I am. But someone has to keep this place running. I'll be down in a minute though. Then we'll get the real party started. All that nonsense beforehand with the stews and everything? I can't stand it anyway. Boring. I heard you can win a bottle of caraway liquor at the wine stand though. Gotta get my hands on that. I've heard it's delicious. And there's only one bottle of it. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. What? Has someone cleaned the bottle already? Well... Uh... You know what? Technically I want it, but we did give it to Hydrich, so we'll just cut to the J's. That grease ball. How dare he? The world just isn't a fair place. He won't even appreciate a drink of that quality. When I get my hands on him... Now, off to your shift. Dr. Krosky's waiting. You're on the night shift together tonight. Yes, indeedy. This should be interesting. Also, I have not forgotten, but we got a, I think it was a hazelnut candle for Irma, so I hope she likes it. Made sure to go out of my way to get that. Good evening, Finlay. Happy Hibernation Festival, Dr. Krosky. Yes. I hope you had a good time. Yes, I... It's just the two of us today. Holidays are all well and good, but someone has to keep the lights on here. That's true, so how are things looking? As they should, people actually always feel a little better on days like this. Some are homesick, others are just happy to have some peace and quiet. Still, from a psychological point of view, the hibernation festival actually seems to help them. I will take care of our dear Irma today. Please handle your duties. You'll find me in the break room when you're done. Alright, see you soon. That concerns me even more. Why are you going for Irma specifically? Okay, so... Ooh! Oh. Where's Ollie? No, I don't like this. I don't like that. Also, what's this? Uh... I still can't believe that I won. I'm still shaking. That was amazing. Thanks, Finley. You're welcome, Mia. Okay. So, let's start off this way. E31. Oh, good evening, Miss Van Galen. I... It's important not to get rattled. Oh, what happened there? After every uh, inhalation comes an exhalation. Everything that is closed will one day be opened up again and vice versa. May I interrupt for a moment? Oh. 
Hello, Finley. I didn't hear you come in. We were just lost in conversation. Bumped into dear Sonia this uh, evening in the cafeteria. That's one way of putting it. I'd forgotten I was meant to have an important meeting today. Suddenly it got hard to breathe and I passed out again. Dr. Gautura brought me back up here. I have to admit, a certain amount of luck. Benjamin from surgery happened to be passing through at the time, too. He was a huge help in getting Sonia up here safely. Thank you, Dr. Gautura. Um... What were you talking about? Oh, this and that. Ourselves, the world. I helped Miss Van Galen breathe until she managed to calm down. Miss Van Galen, I wish you all the best in a natural recovery for both body and mind. Now I've already taken far too long a break. I wish you both a pleasant evening. Thank you, you too. How are you feeling, Miss Van Galen? I still feel a little out of sorts. Your blood pressure must have begun fluctuating. You had an extremely high resting pulse when you first arrived here. The drugs regulate your blood pressure. Dr. Gautero kept telling me, uh, or talking to me until I felt better. He was saying something about my inner core, breathing exercises, that kind of thing. I tried yoga once, not my cup of tea. Yes, Dr. Gautero has his own way of looking at things, but he wasn't exactly wrong. Hmm. Let me check your readings. We have to make sure that the drugs are working so you remain stable. All right. Okay, but why do you have blood down your front? Assuming that is blood. Oh, not this again. All right, I'm sorry you had a time. Oh. Why is this so hard? I feel like it's double tapping too. Is this meant to be difficult? Oh my god, I actually got some. Okay, except for those ones. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're just... I'm a new doctor. I'm afraid medication will only go part of the way to solving your problem. Would be wise to develop ways to reduce stress. Unfortunately, this happens to a lot of people nowadays. But how am I supposed to avoid stress? Well, there are a few options, but you'll need to work on what works best for you. They didn't teach us much about stress avoidance techniques at medical school, to be honest. Things that Dr. Gotura said, they kind of helped. I'm gonna take a nap. Maybe I'll get lucky and catch Dr. Gotura again tomorrow. Rest well. I'm sorry, I don't know how to take your readings properly, apparently. Okay, P33, this is a new patient, I believe. Oh, you don't even have a roommate in here. Dr. Gerda Neinsdorf? Finally. Bring me back a cup of black tea, then tell Dr. Theobald that I want to speak to him. Um, I'm actually your attending physician. You're a doctor? St. Ursula, save us. You're barely out of diapers. Do they sell medical degrees online now? Let's not lose sight of the matter at hand, Dr. Nystorf. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, by the way. You came to us today suffering from severe tremors. On top of that, you've been complaining of a recurring itching and muscle atrophy. Liver cirrhosis? What? Liver cirrhosis, are you deaf? Have you already been diagnosed? I can't see anything here. I'm a surgeon, child. I've had liver cirrhosis for longer than you've been alive. Accordingly, I'm aware of the high mortality rate once surgical intervention becomes necessary. That's why I'm here. So let's cut to the chase and get down to business. Okay, I wasn't paying enough attention to this last time, I think, so bear with me here while I figure this out. So I need some orange and to get rid of some red. There we go. Uh, go. Uh, I need a little bit of blue and some more orange. 
damage. Okay, so that did that for us. And then maybe that one? No, now I'm missing pink. Uh... Still missing pink? Okay. Why are there no... There's no pills to add pink. Did they make a mistake on this one? Am I crazy? Wait. Was there pink to begin with? Oh, there was pink to begin with. Okay, I have to work around that then. So I can't get rid of any. Well, I mean, I can, but I can only do it once. So there's green and pink sorted, right? Okay, so red, orange, and blue. So there we go. I need a little bit of orange and some blue. How have I messed this up? Now I need a little bit of green, <laughs> but then I can't get rid of any pink. Did I just do the exact same thing? I think I was doing fine beforehand. Um, now I don't have any red. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We can figure this out. So maybe I'll start from the top here. Give myself some blue, but now I have too much red. And too much blue. Um, I could use some orange and I can take away some red. There we go. I could take away some even more red. Maybe? Oh no, I think that's the issue right there. Okay, so now I have the perfect amount of red. No, oh, this still isn't right. I feel like there's something wrong with this one. I'm, I'm probably just missing it. I'll try to get as close as I can here. I'm sorry, I know this might be kind of tedious to watch. So there's two blues. Get rid of a red. Get rid of another red. There we go. Uh, that add on. Oh, I'm so close, but I'm just not quite there. See, both of adding green takes away from pink, and I cannot take away any more from pink. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and say yes. Go ahead. <laughs> that made no sense whatsoever. I'm just- either I'm getting worse, these are getting harder, or that one was not set up correctly. Your living readings are in the critical range. They don't say. To make sure it's uh, cirrhosis of the liver we're dealing with, we need to do a liver biopsy. No. No? I already know it's cirrhosis of the liver. What do you take me for? Well, I'm sure your accounting department will be thrilled if you carry out a few unnecessary procedures they can charge me for. What if it's not liver cirrhosis? Do I have to teach you how to treat me right here? Listen. I... I like a drink, if you know what I mean. Excuse me? I'm talking about chronic alcohol abuse? And your nursing staff insist I don't drink here. So now I have two problems. Alcohol withdrawal. And this blasted liver cirrhosis. According to the latest research, your symptoms could also be triggered by other diseases. New research. A load of waffle, that's what it is. Well, go ahead, I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. I mean... We might. We might not. But yeah, I sure hope these readings... And our marks don't count for anything here. I'm gonna do really badly if they do. Um, what room was Irma in? I wanted to give her her candle, but I don't know if I can go see her right now. 
I might have to wait. I would have really loved to go to the hibernation festival today. I'm sure you would. I'm sorry it didn't work out. It's okay. I've been having my own little hibernation festival right here. Just had a coffee with cream and hazelnut. It was the highlight of my day. You have an inflammation of the uh, renal pelvis. Are you in pain? Yes, but I'm trying not to let it get to me. Alright, but don't make things too uncomfortable for yourself. We can always get you some painkillers if you want. For now, I'm going to give you some medication to help bring the swelling down. Alright. I think this might be the best place. Okay, well I did a little better on that one. <laughs> Please tell us if the pain gets any worse. Or if you have any problems urinating. You shouldn't really be drinking caffeine this late in the day, but you might find that coffee helps a little. Anyway, I wish you had a yeah, I wish you a wonderful hibernation festival and a sound night's sleep. Thank you, I'm definitely wide awake right now. I've got to admit. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. What room was Irma in? If she's in here. No, oh, that's an empty bed. I don't remember. I think she was 302. At least I'm hoping she was. Um, so let's go see Krosky. Maybe I'll get some sort of way to see Irma um, after we speak to them. I'm done, Dr. Krosky. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, everything's fine. You're right, the patients really are doing a little better today. Glad I'm on the night shift now. It's really quite pleasant. If you say so. Well, let's see. I'm sorry, don't judge me. Oh dear. Yeah, smiley face. You were really quick today, I like that. I have one more request for you. Of course, what? Irma. I mean, Miss Decoma. I've been watching her tonight and she's not doing very well. She asked if the nice doctor would stop by again. I think she means you. Why don't you go check on her? I'm sure she'll be happy to see you. Sure, I'd love to. I've got a gift I want to give her anyway. Well, don't keep her waiting. <gasps> Yay! Okay, I'm glad. I was so worried that I wouldn't be able to give her her candle. Uh, alright, let's figure out what room she was in. I know it'll have like a little thing over the door to say that we can go in. Nope, not 302. 303, okay. Hey Irma, how are you doing? Finley, what are you doing here? you were out celebrating today. I was. It was great. Met a lot of people and the stew contest was really exciting. I got the fountain working again for the occasion. Look what I found, Irma. There you go. Oh, be careful with that though. That's fire. Can you smell that, doctor? The scent is just incredible. You've really made my day. Feeling much less shivery already. This brings back so many images for me. So many memories from years gone by. From all the many hibernation festivals I've seen. It was your first one today, wasn't it? Yes. But you should get some rest, Irma. All that talking gets to your lungs. No, it's alright. I need someone I can spin my yarns too. I'm very tired. But I would like to tell you one- don't say last. You're not allowed to say last story. 
Irma? What do you mean by that? It's okay. What? No, it's not okay at all. We'll get you back on your feet, I promise. Get Dr. Krosky right away. We'll figure it out. You've already done more than I can imagine. But may I ask one more favor of you? Of course, what is it? I'd love another cup of tea. My throat's a little dry, you know? Of course, I- we- Now, family, don't fuss. It's alright. I'll just dash to the break room. We have tea there. I'll be right back. I hate this. I hate this. I want to put out the candle, but I can't. I also don't feel like you're still gonna be there by the time we get back and that's gonna be very upsetting. I want to be wrong. I want to be very wrong. No, no. No, where's Kurowski? I was gonna go for her first. I always have hot water here, thank goodness. What kind of tea should I make? Black tea, peppermint, fruit, green, winter. Go winter. And I better get this straight to Irma. Finley taking a break already? No, I... I'm just getting a cup of tea for a patient. Ah, yes, old Irma has a taste for the finer things. Will you come with me, please? Irma isn't doing well at all. I know. I already went to see her and checked her readings. She's going to die in the next few hours. But we have to do something. What I'm going to do is make myself a cup of tea too. How can you just walk in here like nothing's wrong? Why aren't you doing anything? I've already done everything I could. Sometimes even the best treatment in the world can't help Finley. But, go to her. Make her last hours as comfortable as possible. That is our duty to her now. Make sure she has enough painkillers. Shouldn't we contact her son? I have already tried that too. Fortunately, I have not yet been able to reach Giliano. I'll keep trying and inform him of the situation. Go now. Oh, that's upsetting. Irma's tea is getting cold. Okay. Oh, I hate this. Irma, you're not allowed. You've told me lovely stories. I'm back and I've got your tea. Irma? Hmm? Who? Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off for a minute there. You're a darling. Thank you so much. Just set it down there. I remember my first hibernation festival like it was yesterday. It's already very cold for the time of year. The cars and park benches were buried in snow. But the hibernation festival still had to go on, of course. Gilbert. Loved hot air balloons more than anything else in the world. But he also had a great fear of flying. And he wasn't the youngest anymore either, neither of us were. So we compromised by heading to the countryside to watch the balloon race. At least we used to until it was banned. It was the hibernation festival. When Gilbert sat in a hot air balloon for the first time. There was already snow on the roads and the roofs of houses. The lights, the smells. They were there every year. When it was cold outside and everyone started to come closer together. I'd already bought a hazelnut candle and enjoyed some lovely conversations with plenty of laughter. 
when Gilbert secretly slipped away. He'd spotted a hot air balloon in the square. Back then, you could still book flights in the winter. He said you could see the whole town from up there. But that year, the balloon remained grounded. The weather was already bitterly cold and very windy. Then, all of a sudden, an icy gust of wind blew across the square. Hats and caps flew through the air. Mothers had to hold on to their children. And that gust of wind blew my Gilbert right into the basket of the, of the balloon. When he picked himself back up to climb out, he got the fright of his life. The balloon had broken loose and was already rising hundreds of feet above town. And me? I'd seen the whole thing, and I leapt desperately to a dangling rope to try to hold the balloon down. But instead, I simply floated away with it. Gilbert helped me into the basket, and the wind carried us higher and higher into the windy or wintry clouds. Porcupine was no more than a small speck of light in the fog. Eventually, it disappeared altogether. Gilbert could barely move due to his fear of heights. The cold bit into our skin. I managed to cheer him up. His dream had finally come true, I reminded him, riding in a hot air balloon. Fortunately, we soon realized that the burner was frozen. Then I remembered the hazelnut candle I'd bought. So Gilbert and I made ourselves comfortable in the basket of the balloon and lit the candle to keep us warm. I don't know how long we sat there, but it was indescribably beautiful. Just saw the sky and the clouds and the scent of the hazelnut candle. Suddenly there was a bang! The burner had started up again! The heat from the hazelnut candle had thawed it out! Gilbert quickly figured out how to steer the balloon. Even the altitude didn't bother him anymore, but how would we know which way to go? Then, before we could even begin to worry again, I heard it. Very softly. The Hibernation Hymn, the song everyone in Porcupine sings together for the Hibernation Festival. We strained our ears and Gilbert steered the balloon straight toward the song. Eventually, Porcupine emerged from the fog. The beautifully decorated marketplace, the snow-covered roofs, and the festival goers. What a sight! They had broken into song to help us find our way back. Gilbert landed right in front of the fountain and all the crowd cheered. That's the story, more or less, of how my Gilbert and I took flight together for the first and last time. He died the following year. I'll be reunited with him soon. And we'll fly together again. Oh. That trophy really ruined it. Are they still playing the hibernation hymn in the square? Maybe. I'm not quite sure. I think I can hear it just faintly. Oh, look at the candle. It's like burned down. Yes, they're probably still celebrating. And here's the two of us stuck working the night shift at the hospital, eh? You're doing a good job. With the work. But I... Irma? I made it. To the... To the hibernation. I kind of wish I hadn't had those trophies pop up. I'm sorry. That was one of those things where it kind of ruined the moment. Um, okay. We're getting to a point now where I don't know how much longer this game is going to go on for. I will give warning. I read some reviews that said it actually stops very, very suddenly. So I think I'm going to do an outro here. And if you see I've cut it out, assume it's because it's going to wrap up soon. If it's if it doesn't cut out, you know, you'll know <laughs> that there's more. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I love Irma. That was a lovely story. She was a really nice character. Um, and I'm glad that we got to be here, be there with her for that. I don't know if it was possible to not get the candle and like not sit in there with her. But that would have been heartbreaking if we hadn't hadn't done that so um 
thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. And I will see you all in the next one.